Okay, I'm going to talk about two different genera in the cypress family. Uh, the namesake, cypress, is a genus. Uh, the scientific name for that genus is Cupressus. And then, similar to cypress, there's juniper. And the scientific name for juniper is juniperus. I'm going to start with cypress and then move on to juniper. Um, cypresses, I've got a large um, cypress here. Um, we'll closely get the leaves down here, though. This picture kind of does a good job of it. Oh, sorry. It's a black and white ripped up photo, but it gets you the idea. It's got scale-like leaves in a decussate arrangement. The leaves are very tiny and they're pressed against the twig so you cannot see the twig. And um, they often have um, bloom or resin on them, um, giving them a sort of a bluish color. You can see that in this particular cypress here. So really thin little stems and completely covered with, with the leaves. The, theme, or the male cones or strobiles are tiny and yellow and they're at the ends of the branch. And then the female cones are woody. Um, they have a round shape with flat peltate scales that have a prickle in the center. And they persist on the tree. So they open up. When they're, uh, the seeds are ripe, the cones will open up, release the seeds, but the cone itself will remain on the tree. It's about the size of a gumball, um, I don't know, half inch to an inch across. And they look differently depending on the species. Sometimes they'll have bloom on them, especially when they're not fully ripe, but they're woody and hard. Um, Cypresses are small to medium sized trees that have each of the, the species within the genus tends to have a pretty small range. There's several different uh, species that grow along the coast of California up to southwestern Oregon. All of them have really small ranges on the coast. Then there's a few more that move uh, to the interior southwest where they grow mixed with pinyon pines and junipers. Um, there's also uh, cypresses in Mediterranean region. They're adapted to arid climates and Mediterranean sort of summer dry climates. Um, the other thing to notice about uh, cypress is that the sprays of foliage stick out in all directions. So they do not lie flat. Instead they kind of, you know, every which way they're sticking out. So scale-like leaves, sprays that do not lie flat, round cones with peltate scales, meaning shield-like, each one um, armed with a knob or a prickle. So juniper looks very similar, or can. Juniper can also have this same leaf um, arrangement, scale-like leaves in a decussate arrangement, um, but they're more variable. It's, it's a huge genus and it has a lot of variability in foliage. So sometimes they'll be scale-like and oppressed to the twig. Um, sometimes, they, on this, they'll be tiny and awl-like. So they're still pressed to the twig, but they stick out a little bit at the ends. This is Rocky Mountain Juniper. And then they can also be needle-like. And um, the arrangement of needle-like leaves can be Decusset or ternate. Ternate means three leaves per node. Decusset, of course, means two leaves per node. So you can get all those different looks. And similar to the jun to the cypresses, it is fairly common for the foliage of junipers to be bluish because it's covered with resin and blue, you know, bloom and resin. Sometimes it even has white dots on it, which are actually spots of resin. But you'll notice right here, from what's the, the way you're going to tell it apart from uh, cypress is the cone. Junipers have a small round cone that are often called juniper berries. They're actually fleshy, and when you get them in the right moment, they can be quite sweet. Um, but they're often covered with a pretty strong tasting resin. Um, there, it has, it's a round cone and it actually has peltate scales, but because the scales become fleshy, and the, and the scales don't open up when the seeds are ripe. It always just looks like a fruit, even though it's a cone. And the way the seeds are released is uh, the bir birds eat juniper berries, and once this cone passes through the digestive tract, 
of a bird, it comes out with the seeds released and a little pile of manure to go along with it. Um, there's only one species of juniper that uh, you're responsible for in this class, and that's western juniper, Juniperus occidentalis. Uh, western juniper um, has scale-like leaves and a decussate arrangement, but when it's it's vigorously growing shoots or when it's a juvenile before it's reached sexual maturity, it will have all like leaves in a ternate arrangement. And you can find both types of leaves on the same tree, especially if it's growing vigorously or it's still fairly young. Uh, most western junipers are functionally dioecious, meaning there's males and there's females. Um, and you won't find these berry-like cones on the males. You'll just find the small yellow male strobiles. Um, and then on females, they'll be loaded with these, these uh, berry-like fruits. Um, in western juniper, they are a bluish-black color, but if you rub off the bloom, but because they're covered with bloom, they look blue. But other members of the juniper genus that will have berries that can be green, they can be dark purple, they can be rusty red, reddish brown, so there's a variation, but in western juniper, they're gonna be blue. Uh, western juniper is a small to medium-sized tree with beautiful, it starts out with scaly bark and then it becomes this beautiful reddish um, fibrous bark that looks almost woven and twisted around the trunk. Um, it grows in the uh, central part of the state and south end towards Nevada and California. It's rapidly, its range is rapidly spread over the last hundred years due to a variety of factors including um, livestock grazing and fire suppression. Um, and it's moved into sagebrush grassland ecosystems. And so um, that's become an issue because it's a very competitive species for water and very few understory plants can grow with it. Um, that said, it's, it is the most drought tolerant uh, conifer in Oregon um, and very tough and adaptable. And long lived, if it can avoid fire, it is fire sensitive. So it, it really needs to be to where you find the oldest trees are places that are nationally protected from fire, like rocky ridges, places like that. But I did, she did want to point out though, This little low growing, this is a, um, a little sample from a common juniper. It's not a species that you're responsible for. It's a prostrate um, shrub to small tree. And it has a circumpolar range. It's found in the northern uh, hemisphere on all continents, um, including here. We have common juniper growing in the mountain ranges here. It tends to be in rocky, sunny spots growing along the ground. And it produces a dark, um, purplish blue juniper berry. But you notice it has um, needle like leaves and a turnite, turnate arrangement and a green on the back side and have a bloom on the upper surface, which is sort of weird. Most of the trees that we're seeing have stomata bloom on the undersurface, um, more so on the, than on the upper surface, and this is the reverse. And this is actually the juniper that um, people make gin with berries, although there's a lucrative business using western juniper these days as well. Western juniper is also used for making um, like fence posts and biofuels and kind of interesting um, uh, furniture because it has a twisted form to it and also it's harvested for resin 